Welcome to church today. It is great to see everybody here. I believe you still can't sing. Um, So we will sing, but stand there and feel blessed by us singing to you. You can feel free to stand if you like. be seated will now be brought the announcements. I've missed you lads (laughs) and thank you for that. (laughs) Good morning everyone. Good morning to everyone here and good morning to everyone online. So glad you could join us this lovely morning. So um, I have lots of announcements to do, which is really great because there's been a a drought of them for quite a while, but things are happening again, which is really great. So first thing's really easy, the word for today, devotionals. We have free copies available out in the foyer, either on the little table as you walk in or on the little roundabout pamphlet thing. So please, if you use the word for today, please pick up your free copy. So I have to apologise. I made an incorrect announcement last week. I said access starts last Friday. It did not. So this is the rules. You need to understand if I make a mistake, which I do, (laughs) you yell at me (laughs) and let me know I'm wrong. (laughs) Don't tell me three days later. (laughs) So access is really starting this Friday. That's our youth, access youth, and I've seen the program. Um, just the the headlines, but it looks like a really great program ready to go. And great 
things um, our Hope Kids has started today. So Sunday School has started today, which is great to see that restarting. And um, also, more exciting news is that our Hope Harvest Markets are going to kick off, hopefully, on the 20th of February. And hopefully, each month, we will have our Hope Harvest Markets here. So um, like the Facebook page if you're on social media. But, and if you know a farmer who has produce to sell, please um, let Liz uh, McDonald know. She's organising the, uh, the people who will be selling their goods and so we can have um, a great opportunity to support our farmers and support our community. So that's the 20th of February. And um, I just wanted to say thank you for those who um, come prepared to give an offering each, each week. We don't pass our little bags around anymore due to COVID, um, but there's an offering bowl and envelopes located at the rear of the um, chapel if you wish to do give in cash. Otherwise, um, we're very um, welcome. We welcome direct debits um, to our, our uh, bank account. So, but thank you very much to all who support us through that. And I'd now like to invite James up to um, do the congregational prayer. Thank you. Yes, uh, let's take this time out now in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for bringing us together as a church family today. We just pray, Lord, that everyone who's here today feels blessed and encouraged and that we pray that at the end of today's service we'll feel a lot closer to you and that we'll be able to apply what we've learned today in our daily lives this coming week and in the weeks ahead. We just pray that you be with us, Steve, later as he deliver us your word to us too. And we just want to pray too for our church with the resumption of so many activities uh, for today, uh, our junior church. And we just pray that you be with, with Sally as she runs it today and that the children ha have a lovely time and feel challenged into pursuing a relationship with you. And we also want to pray for our youth group and our kids club that also resume this week too. We just uh, pray, Lord, that it will be the beginning of a new fresh year and that you'll be with all, all the leaders who, who are running it, that we really connect to the, the children and, and our youth. And we just continue to pray too for our, our youth and children that, that their hearts and minds continue to grow in you and that they have a sense of, of direction and a sense of your love and your purpose for their lives too, Lord. And likewise, Lord, we pray for the uh, other ministries within our church too, Lord, for uh, our men's ministry and our op shop too, Lord. We just uh, pray, Lord, that all of these activities connect well to, to bringing people to your kingdom and that we can be a beacon of your light and your love to the community, Lord. Lord, we continue to pray for the, the COVID situation around the world. We just thank you, Lord, that the situation here in Australia is far less severe than so many other countries around the world. We just uh, continue to pray, Lord, as vaccines are rolled out, that it will really play a part in extinguishing this virus and uh, bringing people t together again. But we just uh, pray, Lord, that you be a source of comfort and love to the people who have lost uh, loved ones. Uh, Lord, we also want to pray for our leaders in local, state and federal government too. We just pray, Lord, that you continue to be with them, give, give them wisdom in making decisions that, that are fair. For, for society and for those that profess a faith in you, we just pray, Lord, that they would seek your will and not their, their own will in, in making laws and decisions, Lord. And uh, de dear Lord, too, we just thank you that we live in a country where we continue to have the freedom to worship you, Lord. And Lord Jesus, now we, we remember the prayer that you taught, taught us so that 
we could uh, be connected to our Heavenly Father at all times. And I invite the congregation to join with me now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for now and forever. Amen. Thank you. How great is our God. Oh, no, we've got someone else. I'm breaking in for some late breaking news. Here we go. Um, it is so exciting to see many of our ministries starting back. Uh, you know, we have Sunday School Hope Kids starting back this week. All the kids have sort of gone out early, so that's why we're not running around so much uh, in the chapel. But we also have our youth group this Friday, um, you know, our Friday Kids Club for K-6 to starting the following Friday, and we have our Play-Doh play group starting tomorrow. Give a cheer for all of these things. There we go. It's fantastic. And every one of you cheering, we need your help uh, with these ministries. We need people to, to help to volunteer to support these areas of ministry. Um, all of these things work together to build community and kingdom, uh, to encourage families and children to, to grow together and to grow in faith. So we need some people to help support these areas of ministry. So let me very quickly just tell you some of the needs and maybe uh, the Holy Spirit might uh, give you a, a tap on the soul and say, hey, that's what I want you to do uh, today. The first thing we need for all of these ministries is prayer. We need people praying and supporting these ministries before they happen and while they happen and praying for the people who come along. If you've got a heart for prayer, we need you to support these ministries. Um, our Sunday school program, Hope Kids, needs three additional volunteers for this term. And you only have to volunteer once. Like over eight weeks, we need three people to fill in to support and help teach our kids. Um, we, in our Friday Kids Club, we need a couple of extra volunteers to help wrangle the kids, play games with them. If you like playing games with kids, you will have so much fun. Come along and do that. We also need people to uh, cook meals and to serve the kids, because that dinner is part of the program. Uh, if you're good in the kitchen, you know, we, we need your help. Now, kids are small, so they don't need much food, so don't worry uh, too much about it. Um, but we also have one uh, big need, uh, and that's for a creche. So it's so wonderful to have so many families in our church, and a whole bunch of them are out at Sunday school right now, but that's for kids in kindergarten to year six. So anyone below that age, uh, you know, doesn't get uh, additional attention or support. So we're looking for four or five people to go on a roster to say, yes, I love kids and I'm okay to spend a, an hour or so with them on a Sunday morning. So parents can stay in the chapel, worship God and focus uh, on, on what's being said instead of you know, having to run around after the kids. Not that they're lovely, and I love them when they run around, but we want to give parents an opportunity to, to focus. So if that's you, then we want you to help make a difference in this place. Okay, now you can go. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. How great is our God. Please stand and be blessed by us singing to you. Sing 
strong and kind. If I am lost, 
Jesus strong and kind. Amen. Please be seated. I love that. <laughs> big man needs a big intro. We, uh, uh, I don't know if you guys said hello to you earlier, so I'll say hello now. It's wonderful to be here with you this morning, both those who are in the room and you who are joining us online today. I'm going to pray, then we're going to open up the word together. Will you join with me? Holy Father, I want to thank you so much, Lord, for once again bringing us together, Lord, to uh, worship your name to uh, be in a space where we can open our hearts and push away the things of life to see you clearly today. Father, I thank you that even though we can't sing with our lips, that we can still worship you with our hearts. And Lord, I thank you uh, for what we have right now, your word that is a lamp to our feet, that illuminates our steps and has us living uh, in, in a way that we might never expect or imagine. Lord Jesus, I pray that the words that I speak this morning come not from my lips, but from your heart and to your people. Amen. A couple of weeks ago, uh, the family and I, uh, I, got a, I got a week off. Yes, I get a week off sometimes. And the family and I went up north to camp. Uh, we went up to a place called Crowdy Head, which is a little north of Taree. You have to keep, if you hit Taree, you have to keep going. You can't stay there. It's not a great place to be, you know. Um, I'm talking to one person here. Um, uh, it, we went up and camped, and uh, every morning we went to Crowdy Beach, which is just absolutely lovely. We spent time swimming in the ocean and then devoted the rest of the morning to some expert sandcastle construction. Now, I love Crowdy Beach just because of how it is, but it has a, another feature that I didn't expect. A little further down the road, or down the beach from where we were uh, you know, swimming and playing as a family, there was a four-wheel drive access. So if you had the right permits, you could get in your four-wheel drive or your, your station wagon or sedan if you were really keen, and you could drive out on the sand. And you could drive for kilometres and find the perfect spot just for you, a place that you couldn't reach on foot. And uh, the, the place where you could drive in was just a little further down from where we were uh, swimming and building sandcastles. And so I was just fascinated watching the cars drive out, or the four-wheel drives drive out. You know, 99% of these four-wheel drives would just crest this hill, hit the sand, and keep on going. But uh, one in maybe every 50 or so would come around the corner, would crest the hill, hit the sand and get bogged right at the entrance to the beach. They just get stuck there. Um, you know, they, they wanted to have a fun morning in the sand. I just try and get myself in the heads of these people. They, they had these dreams of what the day would look like. They were going to go on an adventure. They were going to find a perfect bit of beach just for them where no one else could get to. And now in their cert, they were stuck, just bogged down. You know, now their circumstances had drastically changed. They were stuck and needed help out. Now, Everyone who gets bogged usually does one thing when that happens. You know what that is, church? Yeah, all right. You hit the accelerator and try to power your way out. And that's what every single person who was bogged on the beach did. You could hear the engine straining, like, and the wheels are spinning and spinning and spinning. And the result of all of this pressure, uh, of all of this uh, uh, motion, was just to dig them down deeper, to get them further and further bogged. 
the ones who got out the quickest, the ones who found themselves on their way the fastest, were the ones who called on others to help. Because when we are bogged in our circumstances, all we can see is the problem in front of us. You know, this is some wisdom here, church. You'll be amazed. Here we go. When we are bogged in our circumstances, all we can see is the problem in front of us. And often it takes someone outside of our circumstances to give us the vision to see a way out. Are you with me? Here we go. Okay, when we are bogged in our circumstances, all we can see is the problem ahead of us. Now, and in, it, it doesn't matter if you're driving a car down the beach or just in life in general. In life, we can get bogged by our circumstances. And we get bogged and we hit the accelerator trying to power our way out of our problems. But all we do, uh, all, all, the result of all of this is we end up worn out, burnt out, worn down, exhausted and depressed. We don't see a different way out of our circumstances. All we can see is what is in front of us. Now, there's good news for us in this church. Now, I wouldn't be talking about if I didn't have something to offer you today. When we are bogged by our circumstances, when things aren't going the right way in life, when we feel stuck in life and unable to, to escape, when all we can see in front of us is our circumstances, our problems are sinking deeper and deeper, when we feel bogged by our circumstances and we can't see anything else, God God gives us a big picture. God gives us an outside look, an expansive vision to give us traction in life and to get us unstuck. When we are bogged by circumstances, God gives us his vision to get unstuck. When we are bogged by our circumstances, when all we can see is the problem in front of us, God gives us his vision, his perspective, so that we can have traction, that, so that we can get unstuck. Someone said, hey, someone say hallelujah. There we go. All right. Oh, I shouldn't have to prompt it, but that's okay. Uh, I'm not the only one excited about this, am I? I'm not the only one that gets bogged by the circumstances of life and needs a way out. We all get into this place in life. You know, uh, we see this all through Scripture as well. It's Scripture after Scripture of people who are bogged down in life who come to Jesus to change their circumstances. There's people who, uh, there's something's wrong in their life. And that's all they can focus on. There's a problem and they try and lay it down at Jesus' feet. They come to Jesus and they say, Hey Jesus, my life isn't the way I want it to, do, want it to go. If you could make a change, I'll be grateful. Now, Jesus, if only you could heal me. Jesus, if only you could deal with my landlord. Jesus, if only you can deal with my finances. Jesus, if only... We bring our circumstances, they bring their circumstances. If only you could deal with this, my life would be different. Scripture after scripture, people coming before Jesus stuck in their problems, bogged in their problems. And sometimes Jesus makes a miracle. Sometimes it's a healing, sometimes it's a word that helps them escape. But in every situation, whether there's a miracle or there isn't, in every situation, Jesus provides a vision of the kingdom so that we might have, that they might have traction in life to get unstuck from their circumstances. When we are bogged by our circumstances, God gives us his vision to get unstuck. You know, 2,000 odd years ago, the Jewish people took a look at their circumstances and scripture and they said, Jesus if only you would deal with the Roman Empire, everything in our lives would be different. They, they were stuck in their circumstances. They looked at the scripture and said, oh, there's a Messiah coming. And because our circumstances are what it is, that Messiah must be a big general. It must be a king. It must be a warrior to dig us out of where we are. You know, they, they look at scripture and say, okay, Jesus, well, our circumstances are this, so we need you to be that. And Jesus doesn't do that. They come and say, Jesus, we want you to establish a national kingdom. Jesus, we want you to kick the Romans out. All they could see was their circumstances. That's where they were bogged. 
They couldn't see what Jesus was doing amongst them. They just wanted God to fix what was in front of them. And I wonder, have you ever done that, church? I'm looking at you online as well. Have you ever done that? Have you ever been so caught up in your circumstances, so focused on the problem, that your prayer is only, God, fix this and life will be better? that all you can do is see the problem in front of you. Now, this is a a no-judgment zone. No no condemnation uh, on you if this is where you've been in life, because I confess, I've been in this place. And I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, because I I know that most of us have been in this place as well. God, just fix everything, and my life will be better. God, I'm in this hole. Jesus, dig me out of it. I'm in this relationship. I need you to push it further down the line so we can get married. You know, Jesus, the doctor gave me bad news. I need some healing right now. Jesus, uh, I'm having trouble with my landlord. Find me the, the house of my dreams and everything in my life will be better. Jesus, if you only do this, my life will be better. Jesus, if you fix the thing that's right in front of me, the thing that I'm bogged in, uh, if you just fix this one thing, life will be okay. We can be so reactive. If you're taking notes, write this one down. This is good. This is the pearl right here. We can be so reactive, so driven by circumstances, we can be so focused on the problem, so reactive to the problem, that we can't see the movement of God around us. Someone say amen. We can be so reactive, so caught up in our situation, in our problem, that we can't see the movement of God around us. And in every time we are bogged in our circumstances, the way that God helps us get out is to give us an expanded view, to give us a big picture, to give us His vision. Because that's how we get traction. That's how we get unstuck. The disciples, they repeatedly tried to get Jesus to fix their circumstances. And, and this is where we're going to focus today. We're going to look at Acts chapter 1, verses 6 to 8. We're only we're just a few verses that have such power to teach us today. You know, we, the, the, the disciples keep trying to get Jesus to fix their circumstances. Um, and in Acts chapter 1... We are looking at the resurrected Jesus. You know, the, this is the, the, the context of the passage. Jesus has come to earth. He's incarnated the baby. He's lived 30 years. He's had three years of ministry. He's been strung up on the cross so our sins uh, can be uh, taken care of. The guilt and the shame of our sin has been taken from that cross and buried in the grave so that we can see ourselves differently. Jesus is resurrected from the dead and says, you, you have an old life and a new life with me you can be resurrected with me and live differently and then Jesus is hanging around for a little while he's got holes in his hands holes in his feet a a hole in his side from the spear and he's hanging out with his his disciples and his apostles who is going to build his church and all they can do is focus on one thing the immediate thing their circumstances they can't see the activity of God in the world here is the resurrected Jesus right in front of them and they ask him this question. It says in Acts chapter 1 verse 6, so when the apostles were of Jesus, they kept asking him. I like that word kept. It's important here. I think I bolded it. Yeah, it's a little bold up there. They kept asking him this question. Uh, In the morning, they'd ask Jesus, when are you going to restore the kingdom? At lunchtime, Jesus, when are you going to restore the kingdom? At nighttime, when are you going to restore the kingdom? They kept asking him. That suggests to me, church, that they were bogged in their circumstances. The resurrected Jesus is in their midst and all they can see is the one problem in front of them. They were bogged. They, they come up to Jesus and say, hey Jesus, those miracles were great, but when are you going to establish your kingdom? Hey Jesus, that sermon on the mount, 
good work. People are going to be talking about that for years. But when are you going to establish your kingdom? Oh, Jesus, I remember when you fed all those people on the hillside with just a couple of bread rolls and, and, some, and some fish. But when are you going to establish your kingdom? The disciples are bogged in their circumstances. And I want to suggest, church, that sometimes you and I can be in that same place, that we can be bogged in our circumstances and all we can see is the problem and we miss the activity of God going on around us. They're bogged in their circumstances. They've got a narrow vision. And it would be easy to laugh at these guys. It would be easy to dismiss these disciples, these apostles, if we didn't keep getting bogged in the same way ourselves. This is what I love about the Bible, the Word of God. If I was writing a, a religious text for, uh, for people to follow me, I'd erase all the problems. I'd, I'd make myself look so shiny and great, there'd be not an issue in there. My followers would be switched on, uh, no one would have a problem. This is reality right here, isn't it, church? These are people like you and me, stuck in their situation, stuck in their problems, bogged down. We could laugh at them, but we do the same thing. They're bogged because life isn't going to plan. We get bogged because life isn't going to plan. You know, I thought I'd be married by now. Oh, we, we get bogged in our work. Oh, I, I thought I'd be in management. I thought I'd be further along in my career. I thought I'd have more saved for the house deposit. You know, I thought I would be fitter uh, you know, by now. Well, maybe that's my hang-up. Okay, uh, confession. Okay. Uh, you know, we, we get bogged because life isn't going to plan. We have this narrow vision, just what's in front of us. Sometimes we get bogged because our circumstances don't match those around us. Jealousy comes in. Uh, uh, envy comes in. We see our neighbours drive up in their brand new car and we think, hey, I've got to keep up with those guys. Uh, I need one too. Or we think, oh, my friends are so much more financially stable. Uh, what they, they made so, you know, what, why aren't I in that position in life? We, we get bogged because our circumstances are being pegged against others. Well, and this is the good news, church. When we feel bogged by our circumstances, whether it's from our own expectations or the expectations we place on others, God will give us traction to get unstuck by sharing his vision with us, by opening our eyes to the rest of our life, to the rest of the world, to sharing his vision for life. It takes a change in thinking. The disciples say to Jesus, you know, when, when are you going to come and free Israel? When are you going to restore the kingdom? When are you going to change our circumstances? Verse 7, Jesus says this. He replied, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times. They are not for you to know. This is under control. I don't know much about um, driving on sand, but I know one thing that you're supposed to do. Does anyone else know the rule? Let your tires down. Here's some people who have been bogged on the sand. Okay. The, the number one rule when you're about to drive out on the sand is to let some air out of your tires to relieve the pressure so that things can get traction. Um, I, I, I don't know about you, but that's what I see in this moment. When we are bogged in our circumstances, sometimes we, we need someone to let the pressure out, someone to relieve what's bottled up inside of us so we can see our situation differently. Here in this one little verse of scripture, I think Jesus is relieving some of the pressure on his disciples, on his apostles. He says, you know, you're stuck in this. All you can see in this is this. I want you to move forward from here. I want you to be doing what you're called to be doing. Don't worry about the dates and the times. God has got this under control. He hits the stem on the tire and just lets some of that pressure out for us. 
And I can say this, I think, with some confidence because of another time Jesus was asked this question in Scripture. In Matthew chapter 11, disciples came to Jesus and asked exactly the same question. You know, when are you going to kick the Romans out? I'm paraphrasing. When are you going to kick the Romans out and re-establish our rule in our home? When are you going to push people out and build up the walls and Jesus answers the same way to me he says only the father knows the day and the time but then he continues in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 Jesus says this and I think we can apply this in our lives right now Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 when people are worried about the circumstances when all they can see is what's in front of them when God is in control and they know it Jesus says to them and he says to you this morning he says to you this morning he says to me when you are stuck when you are bogged down where you're in between where you were and where you want to be it says Jesus says come to me all who are weary, come to me. All who are bogged, come to me. All who are stuck, come to me. All who can only see their problems, come to me. All who are focused on their circumstances, come to me. All who are weary, come to me. All who are in between where they were and where they want to be, come to me. Uh, all who are weary and carry heavy burdens, come to me. Who carry the expectations that come from the self and come from others come to me all who are weary and carry heavy burdens and I will give you rest I will let the pressure out I will let you see past your circumstances put it on me and I will change your thinking I will give you rest when we are bogged by circumstance God gives us the traction to get unstuck he takes the burden, he restores the soul. In place of our narrow vision, in place of our eyes only fixed on our problem, he gives us a vision of the future and a vision of how the present can be different. He gives us kingdom vision, kingdom thinking for how life can change and how he wants us to interact in the here and now. Not worried about the problem, but worried, well, worried is the right, wrong word, but uh, focused on his will to be done. If we look at the disciples' question, if we take a step back and ask, what's, what's the real concern of the disciples? What are they thinking? I think the question they are asking is, Jesus, when will things be better? Jesus, when are you going to solve all the problems in my world? Jesus, when are you going to make me comfortable? Jesus, you know, when will things be ordered so I'm no longer on the bottom, but I'm feeling like I'm on top? And Jesus' answer is, I've got this. I've got this. Come to me. Trust me. It doesn't matter what your circumstances are. Trust me. And I will give you rest. And in that rest, I will give you a vision of the kingdom that will help you live your life in a way that stops you getting bogged in these places. I'll give you a kingdom vision to see past your circumstances so that you might help others. But it doesn't even stop there. I love this. Jesus says, you know, don't worry about the times and the dates. The Father in heaven's got that under control. Uh, don't worry uh, about all of this. He says, uh, I don't want you to focus on this. I want you to focus on something else. I'm giving you a mission, a plan, a purpose in this world, a bigger vision than the things that you can see in front of you. He says, don't uh, worry about the times. They're not for you to know, but... There's something else for you to do. Don't worry about the, the, the Romans, but there is something else. But you will receive power, Jesus says to them. But you will receive power to live differently. But you will receive power from the Holy Spirit when it comes upon you. Not only does God widen our vision past our problems, He gives us the power to bring life, to bring God's power to things, and to bring lasting change in this world. I don't know if I said that very well, but I think you understand the, the context. The, God says, I'm going to give you power to make a difference. Don't focus on those things in front of you. Get my vision and I will empower you to work in this world. When we are bogged by circumstance, 
God will give us power to get unstuck. Holy Spirit power. The spirit that hovered above the waters when the earth was formless. He will give us spirit power. The spirit that breathed life into all of creation. Holy Spirit power. The power that resurrected Jesus Christ from the dead. He will give us the the spirit that convicts the souls of humanity. He says, don't look at your circumstances. Look to my vision and I will empower you to walk in that today. The Holy Spirit will come on you and give you power. Someone say, hallelujah to that. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought it was just me getting excited about this. This is good stuff. He says, uh, uh, Jesus gives an expansive vision. So I'm going to give you the power, the strength to live this out. That's the very next words out of Jesus' mouth. He says, uh, you'll receive the power of the Holy Spirit. He says, and you will be my witnesses telling people everywhere about me in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You will have a vision so big that your problems will look so small. You will have a vision so big and a power to accomplish it that uh, you will get traction out of your circumstances and into the kingdom life. That is kingdom vision, I think so, church. Uh, When we are bogged in our circumstances, Jesus provides a bigger vision and invites us to participate in it. And he gives us power to make that happen. He doesn't just say, well, here's something you can be involved in. He says, come with me. Let's do this together. Let's uh, build a a ministry to families in Maitland. Let's build a ministry to uh, older people. Let's help. Let's serve. Let's love. Let's show them Jesus with our actions. When we are bogged by our circumstances, Jesus provides a kingdom vision and the power to make it happen. It's a, a vision of the future based on God's grace, a vision of the present based on God's power and presence. Uh, and the more, uh, it's a, a, a It's more than a change in your circumstances. It is more than just, I had a problem, now my problem's behind me. What Jesus is inviting us into in this moment, when we feel stuck, when we feel bogged down, what Jesus is inviting us into is to be on mission with him in this world, to see it changed and radically transformed, to go out to the ends of the earth, even into Maitland, to share his love, to share his power, to share his mercy, to share his goodness, to share his forgiveness with others, just like his love and mercy and forgiveness have been shared with us and made a transformational impact on our lives. He invites us to lift our eyes from our problems, to see the kingdom come and to see our role in it. Well, let's get practical for a moment. Let's just talk about what we can do with this. Uh, Because, I don't know, I'm worked up about this. This really gets me excited in my spirit, and I know you can tell. I I feel feel really excited about this, but you can't just leave with excitement. You need something practical to go with. So let me give you some next steps today, things that you can do to grasp hold of this in your life. Uh, If you're joining us online, in a couple of moments, we're going to share communion. We're going to cap this message off by uh, allowing the presence of Jesus to be tangible and real in our lives. So if you're at home, grab something to eat and drink. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be cake and a can of Coke, although it's like 10.19. So maybe maybe something, you know, saladas or something, you know, and some water. I don't know uh, what it is. Grab something to eat and drink so you can share with all of us as we share communion. What are some next steps? What what are some of the things we can do to make this practical today? Um, I think the first one is this. We need to let some air out of our tyres. We need to let some air out of our tyres. Often we see our circumstances and we get so worked up. We put our foot on the accelerator. We spin our wheels and all we do is get tired and worn out and exhausted and depressed. 
And that's not where God wants us to put your energy. That's not where we need to, to focus on. We need to let some air out of the tyres so that we might gain some traction in our life, traction over our circumstances. To, so church, I want to invite you right now to take a deep breath. Fill up your lungs. Go on, it's okay. Release it slowly. That is what Jesus wants to be doing in your life. Taking some of the pressure off you. Relieving that in your life. You're thinking about what your life should be like. What you believe the correct path is. Instead, lean into God's vision for your future. Ask Him to show you something beyond your circumstances. Take the pressure off yourself to dig yourself out. Take the pressure off yourself to unstick yourself and rely on Him to get you going. Second thing, this is the last thing. Look to mission for traction in life. Uh, what do I mean by that? Um, you can get bogged down in focusing on the, on the wrong thing and miss the God thing. You can be focusing on the wrong thing and miss the God thing. That's what the disciples were doing in this very small passage of Scripture. Here is the resurrected Jesus, the one who has conquered the grave, and all, uh, he's among them, and all they can think about is the here and now, this thing right in front of them. They are so bogged in their circumstances. And Jesus says, don't worry about that. The Father has that under control, but instead he's going to empower you by his Holy Spirit so that you can move to this place and go to others, to share this message with others. Look to mission to get traction in life, to get yourself unbogged. So don't miss the God thing that's going on around you. Scripture is clear about how God wants you to live and it is on mission. Everyone put your hand over your mouth and go, on mission. That's our COVID safe way of doing that, okay. We're supposed to live on mission, showing others the grace, the love, the mercy, the kindness, the forgiveness that Jesus has shown to you. Thank you, sister. Jesus had a mission for the apostles that span the world and they're so caught up in who rules Jerusalem. When you are bogged by circumstance, God will likewise give you traction through a vision of his kingdom. He will show you something more expansive, something so wonderful and invite you to be part of it. Mission gives you traction to get unstuck. Serving others gives you traction to get unstuck. Sharing the word with others gives you traction to get unstuck. Opening up your heart to others gives you the traction to get unstuck. Instead of building a little kingdom for ourselves at work, at home, in our sports team, keeps God's mission in focus to create a world on earth like it is in heaven. Look up and see how God wants to use you to change the world and create his kingdom here and now through your actions empowered by his Holy Spirit. That is the bottom line of this message today. When we are bogged down in our problems, Jesus will give us a vision of our life, a vision of the present, a vision of the future that we can join in that will get us unstuck. And right now, I want to remember that with you by meeting God at this table. To take this communion today uh, in, in a way to perhaps seal this promise that Jesus is always with us, that he lived and died and he was resurrected for a purpose. And we, we eat this little bit of cracker right now and it reminds us that Jesus came to change our lives, to unstick us from sin, to unbog us from the life of sin that leads to death, to take away the punishment for what we have done wrong, and along with that, the guilt of our sin.
And in this other cup, we have this little bit of juice representing his blood. This blood, Scripture says, washes us clean, whiter than the snow. It allows us to leave one life behind and live a new, resurrected life with Jesus, to be empowered by him, to, uh, uh, to bring the kingdom to the here and now. So if we drink this little bit of juice today, let us remember that he has already changed our lives and he is leading us to another place. And as our band comes up for our final song, I want to make an invitation to all of you. If you are feeling stuck right now, and I, I don't know what the circumstances are. It could be stuck in your health, stuck in your finances, stuck in relationships, stuck with how to deal with your kids, stuck somewhere, and all you can see is your problem. There's no condemnation for you in this place. We want to pray over you and help you see God's way out, God's vision for you to get traction in your life. So I'm going to wait down the front here. If you need prayer, I want to pray for you because I believe that prayer does change lives. It helps us to take our focus of our problems and put it on to, to Jesus. And if you don't want me to pray for you, Dave is an elder of a church. And he's waving at the back there. He's a wonderful guy. He'd love to pray for you. And if not, Dave or I, turn to the person next to you and say, hey, you look good. Will you pray for me today? Be greatly blessed, church. Whilst you are unable to sing, please just have the words wash over you. Oh, come to the altar. God is calling you to come to him. Please stand. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood. regrets and mistakes come today there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling bring your sorrows and trade them for joy from the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling oh come to the altar
Please be greatly blessed in your week.